This is Mackie, a Siberian Husky puppy who just may grow up to become a sled dog someday. Same line of work pursued by the dogs that Connor Knighton met at Denali National Park in Alaska. This is Cupcake. Oh, hey, Cupcake. Oh, <laughs> it hurts. It hurts so much. If you're anything like me, you're gonna need a minute here. It's okay. Take your time. Get it out of your system. Take a deep breath and say, Aww. More puppies. <laughs> I want all the puppies. <laughs> These adorable little guys and girls, five of them total, were born in July at Denali National Park. Cupcake, Happy, Party, Pinata, and Hundo were named in honor of the 100th anniversary of the park service. Denali, formerly Mount McKinley, turns 100 next year. And these pups are just the latest additions to a legacy of Alaskan sled dogs as old as the park itself. Denali's first superintendent was a veteran dog musher named Harry Karstens, who used a team of sled dogs to patrol the backcountry looking for poachers. As the park grew, it needed the supply of well-trained dogs. Karstens established the first and only working kennel in a national park. We always joke that they're the happiest government employees you'll ever meet, but it's really, really <laughs> true. true. That it is true. The yard stays always between 30 and 35 dogs. Um, so Jennifer Raffaelli is the current the kennels manager at Denali. Hi, handsome. Looking after this stable of canine rangers. And while a dog team may seem like a throwback to another era, they're very much in use today. And the really amazing thing about dog teams in Alaska is that sometimes they still prove to be the most reliable and effective means of transportation in really challenging winter conditions. You know, if you're out at 50 below and you try and start up a snow machine, it may or may not start. At 50 below, I go out and say good morning, these guys all jump Selfies up and they're up ready and to go. <laughs> in the frigid winter months, these dogs each run well over a thousand miles, shuttling supplies and creating trails. They come with a built-in GPS. Navigationally, do they help you at all? Oh, incredibly so. I mean, these dogs have brains and hearts and memories better than most rangers. Perhaps most importantly, they do all of this quietly. In 1980, two million acres of Denali were designated as federally protected wilderness. That means no forms of mechanized transport allowed. These dogs were bred to sled. During summer presentations, they show off their skills around the kennel track. As soon as people see the dogs want to run and pull a sled, that's the highlight of every program for them. All summer long, the canine rangers get to meet their adoring public. Volunteer walkers help them stay in shape. And the staff take small groups out to play. Let's go! Eventually, after nine years or so of service, it's time for retirement. The park matches the dogs with active owners like the Winter family. We still go for our two-mile runs. That's pretty much a part of her routine. Aurora ran over 7,000 miles at Denali. Come on, Aurora! In her retirement, she's adopted a few new routines. That feel good? For those who can't bring an actual sled dog home with them, the park has a popular puppy cam. 24 hours a day, visitors can log on and see what the new gang is up to. Each one has his or her own fans. I may be partial to Pinata. You're a dog whisperer. You've got him pretty comfortable there. <laughs> but you know what they say. Kids grow up so fast. Before long, these dogs will join their relatives out on the trail, carrying gear and carrying on a tradition more than a century old. <laughs> 